Hello everyone and welcome to this video which is in our re-engineering the chess classic series. I'm Grandmaster Matthew Sadler and we're carrying on with an excellent game of David Janowski's against Karl Schlechter played in the London International in 1899 and it features an absolutely stunning finish. It's also one of those games where um, I mean, mostly, you know, as a, as a strong player, when you play through a game, you get a, a general sense of the flow of the game and uh, you normally have a good grasp of, uh, you know, what was happening, uh, who was better and when and why. Um, but this is one of those games where the engines rather confuse me. And uh, yeah, you sort of learn just a little bit more about strategy. And uh, there's quite a similarity to a game that was played um, between Elina Rubers and Erwin Lamy. Um, which is called the deepest strategy on this channel. I'll put the link to that uh, to that video there. But it's a very similar sort of scenario where black blocks up the queen side, and you assume that that means that uh, that black is going to be um, um, much worse. But actually, the engines prove that uh, um, well against white's on rushing king side, black can also fight in there and uh, and even get an advantage. So it's a, a very very interesting game, quite deep strategy. And, uh, well, Janowski's finish is very, very nice as well. So this is Janowski white against Karl Schlechter black. Let's have a look how this happened. So e4, e5, knight f3, knight c6, bishop b5, a6. Pretty standard uh, Ray Lopez. And now knight c3 from Janowski. Very unusual, not played uh, very much nowadays. Um, both Janowski and Tarash, I've mentioned this before, had uh, quite a, um, a fondness for putting the knight on c3 in these Lopez positions. Um, uh, nowadays, it's you know it's kind of automatic that the uh, the knight goes to d2, f1 to g3. Um, yeah, I mean actually, this knight goes via e2 to g3, so it ends up in the same place. But um, yeah, they just simply like doing this. Um, yeah, I mean the the drawback to it is after b5, bishop b3, d6. Well, the e5 pawn is protected now, so black gets the chance to go knight a5 and pick up this light squared bishop. So that's kind of the uh, the downside to, to putting the knight to c3. But um, I think around this um, this uh, this period, there was a, a great deal of uh, of discussion really about whether that was a bad thing or not. Um, because after all, you know, if you think about uh, um, the number of lines that there are where white gives up the uh, the light squared bishop, also quite a few lines of the um, um, of the uh, um, the Steinitz, you know, where white takes on c6 and goes d4. So that light squared bishop is often given up for a knight. So, well, you know, in this case, black spending a lot of tempi to do it. Maybe that's not so bad for white. Um, it's, it's interesting. It's interesting. I mean, I don't think it's correct. I think that he should really be trying to keep that light squared bishop. But uh, uh, it's not a completely stupid um, uh, thought, you know, and deserves some investigation. Now, one of these days, I'm going to show you the uh, the amazing game uh, uh, Tarash against Spielman, which carried on a4, bishop g4, a b, and here's Spielman, typically for uh, for his play um, in his early years, he just went all in with knight d4, and it was a totally crazy game. Um, I'll definitely uh, analyse this on the channel later. But uh, Janowski played the uh, the quieter d3. And after knight a5, he just played knight e2. So just getting the um, uh, the knight over to g3, aims for the f5 square, of course, you know, setting up some sort of uh, uh, some sort of um, uh, kingside attack. Um, pawns are on light squares, so, you know, sort of thinking, well, not bad to uh, to have, uh, you know, particularly bad to, uh, to exchange off a light squared bishop. And, um, yeah, I mean, we're just going to see how the position unfolds. Castles, knight g3. And now something slightly strange from uh, from Schlechter. Um, I mean, c5 is very, very natural. I mean, uh, for a start, it may be even threaten c4, you know, maybe trapping that bishop somehow. And uh, well, after c3, um, yeah, the engines uh, did various things. Uh, took on b3 was, uh, was fine, um, but also tried this move c4, which was very interesting. And after bishop c2 takes bishop b6, we've got some sort of... Uh, um, well, it looks like uh, some sort of uh, Nidorf structure, really, you know, Sicilian structure, which looks pretty good for black, really. Rook d1, rook b8 was played, maybe looking for, for b4. b3, queen c7, the knight was rerouted, doesn't have any prospects on, um, on a5 anymore, but it's coming around to c5. Black's playing a5, lovely position for black, really, you know, it's... Um, so that's very, very natural. Um, 
Schlechter's C6, not 100% clear what he was intending with that. I think um, maybe the idea was uh, that he wanted to play d5, and after e takes d5, re retake with a pawn on d5. It's not 100% easy to um, uh, to achieve that. Um, yeah, otherwise, I mean, it's fine as a move, but it's just a little bit slow, and you sort of think, well, yeah, you know, it wasn't particularly needed, just play c5. But um, c3 was played by uh, Janowski and then uh, Schlechter took the opportunity to uh, uh, to get that, that light squared bishop and then played rook e8. Um, yeah, Janowski played d4. So um, yeah, black isn't going to get the opportunity just to play uh, d5 nicely. d4 is putting pressure on the, um, on the uh, e5 pawn. Um, now the engines uh, were often interested just in taking on uh, on d4 like this, and then you know maybe you play something like uh, like bishop b7, or you can play something like queen b6, and um, yeah, you know you're just going to try and play bishop f8, put a bit of pressure on this pawn, maybe get in d5 later, or play the bishop to b7, play c5. Decent position for uh, for both sides there. Um, Schlechter played it a little bit more quietly, but perfectly fine too. Queen c7, just defending the uh, the e5 pawn. Um, Rook e1 from white. Um, and now, uh, yeah, well, maybe a slightly confusing uh, um, choice from uh, Schlechter. c5, you know, didn't play c5 earlier, but playing it now. Um, yeah, I mean, the engine's, uh, you know, just playing h6 to stop bishop g5. Um, and then, uh, you know, maybe going to carry on with a5, something like that. Keep the uh, the, the, the pawn structure flexible. Um, yeah, I mean, that's that's quite reasonable, really. And I think, you know, that, that sort of fits, yeah, the whole point of c6 a, a little bit better. But c5 is, is not a bad move at all. And here white's got to decide, you know, are you going to allow black to um, uh, exchange off in the centre, free the pieces? After all, you know, black's got the two bishops, so... You know, if uh, if you get a general exchange of pawns on d4 and then some pressure along the a8 h1 diagonal, that could be nice. So um, I think uh, Janowski's d5 was uh, was pretty uh, pretty sensible. And here you get something very very interesting somehow. I mean, uh, just uh, intuitively, I suppose. You know, you're, you're kind of conditioned by all the games that you saw as a as a little kid from all these classic books. And uh, you know, it's always you know white with more space in the Lopez and black just sort of you know sort of. Uh, uh, curling up in a ball and just waiting for uh, for white to advance you know and um, well you know your intuitive expectation is uh, well you know black's going to be a bit passive here and white's going to start expanding on the king's side but the engines just say okay right well now let's let's get our counterplay going you know and you say what counterplay and they just say well you know your counterplay on the queen side and uh, so you know a5 bishop d7 a4 this was what the engines were doing you know just uh, creating counterplay on the queen side and white never gets any chance to really build up anything on the uh, on the king side because yeah you're, you're busy dealing with the queen side another idea uh, that uh, this was uh, that was dragon's idea a5 immediately stockfish played uh, this one quite nice g6 and h5 uh, just uh, actually covering the the, the uh, f5 and the g4 squares so white can't play g4 or knight h2 to g4 white can't play knight f5 either and then after bishop g5 in we go with a5 you know queen d3 bishop d7 and a4 in we go again you know and uh, i mean that that's the first thing you know it just really transforms the black position instead of being a, a passive position where you say yeah not much to do it suddenly looks quite dynamic and uh, you know you're, you're making plenty of progress on the uh, on the queen side and white still really to get started on the king side so that's very, very interesting. You know, just this, uh, you know, obviously the engines, uh, they haven't read the same, <laughs> the same uh, poor quality books I read when I was, uh, I was young. You know, they're, they're, just, uh, they're just looking at the position and, um, and uh, there's chances of counterplay and then they're just going for it. It's very, yeah, very interesting, to be honest. Uh, Schlechter played, yeah, slightly um, strange looking move, knight d7, but it's not stupid at all. Um, the idea is that he's anticipating that, um, that white will play h3 and g4. And he wants to bring the knight round f8 into uh, g6 and aim for the f4 square. Yeah, it's it's a bit roundabout, etc., etc. But it's not bad. It's uh, it's quite an interesting idea. So knight f5 was played. Um, yeah, the engines are, are looking at, at just knight f6. Uh, you know, and blacks maybe got some ideas of just taking on f5, for example, um, which is perfectly fine. Um, Knight b6 was another idea that was played by Stockfish, so not worrying about the king side there. 
um, and just preparing to support a5 to a4 with the with the knight, you know, and uh, maybe keep this bishop for uh, maybe exchange it uh, against this one later if it gets too dangerous. You know, also working out pretty well. But again, you know, the engine's going for counterplay there. But knight f8 is not a bad move at all. G4 from uh, from Yanovsky, sort of saying, well, are you aiming to uh, exploit the f4 square? Here you are, have it. And uh, here Schlechter played a rather strange move. Again, you know, uh, it is true that in these um, uh, in these block positions that black can get away with a lot more. You know, you can waste some time. But um, I did find bishop f6 a little bit strange. I mean, it's clear that white's going to go g5 at some stage. So why give him the tempo, really? Um, the engines were looking at uh, c4 now as a uh, counterplay option. If, uh, if you go b4, then a5. And if b takes c4, you go queen c4 and then a5, and off you go again, you know, with your queenside counterplay. So, um, yeah, very, uh, you know, again, engines being very, very active here. This one's uh, just a, a little bit more, um, a little bit strange, really. Uh, I'm not quite sure whether, yeah, maybe Schlechter thought, well, I'm going to play knight g6 to f4, let's get the bishop on that long diagonal, but it seems a bit, uh, yeah, seems a bit early somehow. Now, uh, Janowski took an interesting decision here. He played the move uh, c4. And, um, yeah, I mean, the, the strategy simply is uh, we're going to try and, uh, you know, close the queen side, just uh, completely solidify that, and that'll give us time to attack on the king side, where black can do nothing. Um, and here, Schlechter replied with a move that I thought was must be a terrible mistake. He played the move b4, which is, <coughs> you know, very very acquiescent really you know just giving white everything that he wanted and uh, yeah i assumed after this that white was just um you know clearly better um well i mean the engines uh, you know are looking at stuff like bishop d7 for example and uh, king h1 knight g6 okay we get chased back and then we start going with a5 simply you know and uh, and uh, a4 and we're going to create counterplay there it's a little bit awkward somehow the black pieces look a little bit odd but okay you know that's that's absolutely fine there um, but uh, Schlechter played b4, and um, but the engines are not too, you know, not too despondent. Uh, I think Stockfish's uh, evaluation here was 0.41, um, which is obviously not that uh, drastic. The only thing I will say is that uh, in the games that um, I had between Stockfish and uh, Komodo Dragon MCTS, I'm doing that special mode of uh, Komodo Dragon. It's a little bit weaker than the main one, but sometimes find some interesting stuff, so it just seemed worth uh, trying. Um, there were starting to be a few wins, which I think just sort of indicates that the danger that black is in is some, suddenly is a lot bigger, you know, and uh, is much harder now for black to distract white. But um, but uh, yeah, th it doesn't seem to be, uh, you know, as bad as I thought. And uh, well, in actual fact, uh, well, I'll, I'll explain a little bit later. It was uh, it was actually rather slightly confusing in some ways as well. So h3 was played by uh, Yanovsky, a remarkably calm move for, uh, for, for, for David. Um, h4 is what uh, the engines wanted, um, and, uh, you know, just to, well, to get going, right, to g5, and then we're going to go knight g2 into g, knight h2 into g4, just like Yanovsky did, but with just a little bit quicker, really. You know, that's, uh, um, but it was quite interesting to see what the engines did. Um, one thing that really impressed me there was, um, I think, was this Stockfish? I'm pretty sure it was... Uh, Stockfish doing this. It always is when it's a, a really impressive defensive uh, manoeuvre. Um, after h4, Stockfish took on f5, takes and went h6. King g2, knight h7. I was sort of thinking, well, what are you doing there, really? But uh, the idea, look at this, king e7, king f1, king d8. What's the idea of this simply? Well, simply you've said, look, I've blocked up the queen side. Uh, that means you're not going to be able to do anything any, uh, there. Um, you've got your initiative on the king's side, so I'm just going to move my king over to the queen's side and then hold it statically, um, you know, for the, the rest of the game. And, uh, well, he managed, uh, Stockfish managed to do this very easily against, um, uh, against Dragon. But that was really, really impressive. I mean, yeah, you know, this sort of long-term thinking, you know, it, this always used to be only humans who could possibly do that. You know, Petrojan, amazing king marches. And now every single engine is uh, doing it. On the channel, I've got an example of Vice, uh, for example, uh, doing one of those king marches as well. You know, it really is amazing. Although the defensive ones uh, seem to be, um, you know, really uh, um, the speciality of, well, Leela uh, especially, but also uh, Stockfish as well in this game. Uh, but for, you know, the attacking uh, king marches where you move the king over so that you can shuffle the, uh, the king side pawns with, uh, with abandon, um, yeah, 
that really seems to be something that all engines have mastered by now. Really quite amazing. Um, but after H3, Schlechter played uh, Knight G6, and now G5. And this was the uh, the slightly confusing moment here because um, you know I, I play lots and lots of engine games. You know, the, at the minimum, it's normally uh, something like um, 100, 120 uh, per you know video that I analyze and then um, well depending on uh, on how deep I want to go or whether I've got some uh, some thoughts you know there might be another 100 150 just uh, you know just zooming in on specific things or trying out ideas that I've thought of but I was looking at the list of games and uh, I suddenly saw them all switching to zero one I was thinking hey wait a minute but uh, you know Yanovsky's attacking here you know we're, 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 we're going for it how can this be uh, zero one but actually, what the engines thought, uh, the engines thought that this move uh, G5, that um, um, yeah, white was, was attacking far too early, white wasn't ready to hold the position, and black was able to strike back on the king's side. And this is the thing that really reminded me of uh, that game uh, Rubus Lamy that's uh, analysed on the channel. Um, because in that game too, Erwin um, blocked up the, uh, the queen side he played, uh, he had a you know, pawns on a4, b5, c4 against a3, b2, c3. And, uh, you know, everyone uh, on Twitter was saying, what a terrible mistake, you know, this, this GM understands nothing. Um, we all know that, you, you know, you shouldn't block the queen side because you'll have no counterplay there. But actually, um, I am convinced that he'd analysed this uh, quite deeply. And understood, you know, uh, you know, also by analysing with the engines, that uh, it was possible to create counterplay on the king side, which is where White was attacking. Uh, only, yeah, it was just quite difficult to get it right, and he, he just got it slightly wrong. Just chose uh, slightly the wrong piece setup, and, and it all went horribly wrong. But um, it's the same principle here. I mean, we closed the queen side, but you know, whilst White is attacking, um, White's actually got to be way more careful than you under than you realise. Uh, because black is also able to uh, to strike back, and um, well, I mean that's that's partly due to a number of factors. First of all, the fact that we've got the, the black's got the two bishops, so able to attack, you know, squares of both colours on the king side, and this knight on g6 is superb, of course, uh, you know, aiming for the f4 square. So um, yeah, white should have been a little bit more careful. I mean, the engines were were looking at stuff like king h1, for example, and then bishop e3. You know, let's uh, rookie two, and uh, and then afterwards we're advancing. You know, now that we're nice and ready. Um, but uh, yeah, g5 after g5, black uh, black has some possibilities. And uh, you know that that's the that was the the moment that I also said about uh, where I was assuming, oh well, this is just you know, uh, uh, Yanovsky went on top. Maybe uh, the engines will find a way to uh, to hold it. You know, with incredible defense for Schlechter, but it's. It's quite the game is quite different to how I intuitively saw it. You know, it's uh, uh, White's actually in big trouble here. It's actually um, minus one point oh one uh, the, the engine evaluation after this position because Black plays what Schlechter played, which is f six, and um, we're just going to break open the uh, the king side. And the key point is really, you know, this knight is on f five, supported by a pawn, but only by one pawn. Once we get the uh, the open uh, the f file opened. It's not a very solid barrier. Um, actually, it's a really weak barrier. And, uh, well, you're going to see that white's just going to end up losing that uh, f5 pawn. So queen h5, rook f8. And then, uh, well, let's have a look at a few position, a few little things. Uh, Yanovsky played knight g4, which is uh, natural. Um, if king h1, then the engines were looking at this line, which I thought was very striking. Uh, um, knight g4, queen d7. Queen d7? What on earth is queen d7 about? Well, the idea is that if you do something like f3, I can just take it off. And, um, you know, in this position, the white rooks are not doing a great deal. And black's just ready to invade with a bishop and go stuff like bishop c2, takes b3, roll forward the a-pawn. It's just a very, very nice position for black, you know, minus one uh, according to the engines. And, um, yeah, I mean, this is kind of the problem, really, that, uh, you know, black has got plenty of ways to break up this white attacking structure. And then after that attacking structure is broken up, it's not just, ooh, black survived. It's, no, black's way better. Black's got loads of weaknesses to attack. So, you know, from that point of view, this move B4 is fixing the B3 weakness, you know. Um, so um, knight G4 was played. And now queen d8 from Schlechter, and the engines don't particularly like that. Um, what they were looking at, actually, was uh, to play the move bishop takes f5. And after ef, you go knight e7. And, yeah, all of a sudden, what I said before, this weakness of the pawn in f5 is getting very unpleasant. I mean, if you take on f6, I just go rook f6, and I'm just grabbing it. Rook takes f5 coming up. 
And uh, well, this was one of the engine games. Um, Queen E8, now a lovely move coming up. H5, uh, weakens the Black King, yes, but takes away G4 from the Queen and from the Knight. and makes it harder to defend this F5 pawn. And there's a concrete reason for it. After Queen E4, we go Bishop G5, we give check, and we go Rook F6, and all the Black's aiming is to go Queen F7 and uh, pick up the F5 pawn, which he did, and, uh, and Black won. That was in... Uh, one of my games between it was uh, Stockfish as white and Dragon as black. So, yeah, I mean, actually, white's attacking structure looks really impressive, but it just isn't strong enough, um, um, which is really weird. But, um, yeah, Queen d8 was played by uh, Schlechter. Um, yeah, he wanted to... Well, it's a, it's a decent defensive idea, a little bit passive, but the idea is to, to free uh, the seventh rank for the rook to defend laterally. You know, that's, that's not bad at all. Um, here Schlechter played uh, knight f4, which is not the engine's favourite move, but uh, still, you know, it's just equal, basically. But, I mean, the funny thing is, is that what the engines are looking at, they're looking at uh, exchanges, basically. You know, so um, after knight, uh, knight f4, they want to play knight takes f6, take that off, swap off the queens, lose that pawn on h3, but then break up uh, the, the black pawn structure with, uh, with e5. And, well, you know, after d takes e5, uh, you go knight f3. And this pawn's going to be weak. This one's on the a file. You know, white's going to have enough to, uh, uh, to, hold, um, uh, to hold the draw there, you know. Or, you know, it's just a, an, an equal, uh, um, quite complicated uh, position. Black's got an extra pawn, but uh, white's knight is going to be nice and uh, also got, got a nice pass d pawn there as well. Um, obviously, this wasn't what uh, Yanovsky was doing. I mean, he wasn't looking for um, um, for uh, exchanges. He was looking to build up. And this move F3, um, again, you know, the engine think knight takes F6 should have been played, is apparently a, you know, a very big mistake because um, the engines just want to take on B2. Rook A2, bishop C3, rook A G2. It looks like an overwhelming build-up of forces, but the engines just want to take... Bishop f6, there we are, and just say there's absolutely nothing that you can do. And, uh, well, what's uh, Black going to aim to do? Just move this a pawn forwards and then move this b pawn forwards. And, uh, well, I mean, the engines tried all sorts of things. You can put the rook on g6, but nobody cares. We just go a5, and you've got absolutely nothing <laughs> that you can do. Yeah, it's just um, you just don't have enough. You don't have the right pieces. Your pieces aren't in the right places to, um, uh, to, um, to, to do anything convincing. So, um, yeah, really, you know, really quite impressive this, uh, I have to say. You know, I was, uh, I was quite shocked by it and, uh, and also, as always, deeply impressed. I expect to played uh, King H8 and now Yanovsky maybe got an inkling of uh, that he needed to do something and went takes, went Knight H4, threatening Knight G6, King G8 and then Rook G2. Very nice move, depending on B2 planning rook g1 but yeah i mean the point is that um you know white's gonna get some pressure but yeah i mean how do you how do you really carry on not so easy there um it, uh, it actually as well just uh, worth pointing out that um, the engines actually want to take with the rook and then play for this defensive structure so have the rook covering the third the um uh, the other rook covering the second and then the queen sort of uh, helping along and defending everything as well d6 and uh, and g7 but uh, you know queen f6 is, is definitely there's nothing wrong with that so rook e7 was played by uh, by schlechter looking to play rook e5 and trap this white queen um and then uh, rook g5 was played by uh Yanovsky. not the only move but uh, the engine doesn't mind losing this pawn at all just queen b2 rook g1 didn't seem to find it very important but here black does have to be a little bit careful because white's got a big threat for example if you did something like queen b3 i go queen h6 and then e5 so this move e5, cutting the defense of the queen to the king side, the g7 pawn, is a very big threat all of a sudden. So um, probably the best move, uh, the safest move that black has got is just to go back with queen f6. And then the engines were, were sort of uh, having this as a, as a draw by perpetual. You know, king g8, queen c8, king f7, queen c8. And, um, and a draw basically by, uh, by, by uh, you know, perpetual check. That was what they were basically seeing. But here, um, Schechter, presumably quite confident, I get the feeling, you know, feeling that, um, uh, that uh, yeah, after all, what really did White have? And so he played the move Rook FF7. So uh, just defending the pawn with the other Rook doesn't need the Queen to defend G7 anymore. So you're going to go after the B3 pawn. 
And here maybe pause the video and have a little look because uh, see if you can see the stunning finish that uh, that Janowski came up with. I have to say it's uh, quite surprising. It's sort of thing where you have to, you know, a couple of blinks just to uh, just just to to understand that this is um, that this is actually working for White. Uh, his stunning idea was Queen takes H7 check. Um, what happens? King H7, Rook H5, King G8, and Knight G6. And the amazing thing is that there is absolutely nothing that um, uh, that Black can do about this. Um, I'm threatening Rook, take, rook H8 checkmate, of course. Um, yeah, this Rook on E7, well, the escape square is covered anyway, but it also helps to uh, to hem in the um, uh, the Black King. And, well, it doesn't really matter what you do. Move this Rook, um, check, and Rook F8 is checkmate. Just uh, all sorts of pieces combining to, uh, um, you know, black and white pieces really, combining to hem in the black king, the queen completely uh, offside there, and, uh, and white wins. Um, very, very nice finish, absolutely gorgeous finish. Queen takes h7, quite unexpected as well. Must have come as a complete shock to, uh, to Schlechter. So there we are, hope you enjoyed that. I uh, hope it was uh, interesting, just strategically, you know, the opening and, uh, and the middle game there and how the, the engines look for counterplay, first of all on the queen side and then on the king side where, uh, where white is attacking. Um, really, you know, sheds new light on these, uh, these Rai Lopez positions. Um, yeah, if you liked it, why not give a like, subscribe to the channel, take a look at my new book, The, Sil um, <laughs> the Silicon Road to Chess Improvement. That's my... That's my uh, older book. It's uh, Reengineering the Chess Classics, which is well full of stuff like this, you know, looking at old games, classic games, seeing the beautiful stuff in them and also discovering lots of new stuff as well. Um, and otherwise, you know, thanks very much for watching, for being part of this channel and hope to see you at the next video. Thanks for watching.